In previous videos, we've seen how one can use Maclaurin series and Taylor series to help us solve many calculus problems in a way that's oftentimes easier than without said Maclaurin series. And so it's gonna, it's gonna be beneficial for us to find Maclaurin series for functions. And therefore we oftentimes will need to be able to multiply and divide power series in order to create new Maclaurin series. So case in point, take the function f of x, which equals x times cosine of x. Notice that this function is x times cosine of x. It's a product of two functions. Now, as x is a monomial, which is a polynomial, uh, it's its own power series representation. You don't have to do anything for a polynomial. It's already a power series. Now, for cosine of x, we've seen that its Maclaurin series is equal to uh, the sum or n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n over 2n factorial. And so if we want to find the Maclaurin series for f of x, we can take x and multiply by the Maclaurin series of cosine, like we see right here. So we get x times this Maclaurin series. Well, times in a Maclaurin series by x, when you distribute this x through, because this just is a sum, you distribute it term by term by term by term, by exponent rules, when you end up with this x to the 2n and you times it by x, that'll give us x to the 2n plus 1 uh, that you see in right here. And so everything else is going to be exactly the same. You get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. You get x to the 2n plus 1 divided by 2n factorial. So this gives you your, your Maclaurin series right here. You get x minus x cubed over 2 factorial plus x to the 5th over 4 factorial minus 7, x to the 7th over 6 factorial, et cetera, et cetera. This gives you a Maclaurin series. And if you just need a Taylor polynomial approximation, we can take something like this. In which case, this would be t7 of x. This is the Taylor, the degree 7 Taylor polynomial for x to the cosine of x, x times cosine of x, excuse me. And therefore, we can get away with using this Taylor polynomial to approximate this function, because uh, these two things will be approximating the same thing. Great. Well, things can get a little bit more hairy, of course, when both factors have an infinite power series. Like, what if we want the Maclaurin series for e to the x times sine of x, right? We've seen the Maclaurin series for e to the x. This would equal the sum, where n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. In expanded form, we get 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. Continue on. Um, we can do the Maclaurin series for sine. It's very similar to cosine that we saw just a moment ago. You take the sum, where n ranges from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial, right? In expanded form, this will look like x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Continue on and on and on and on and on. So these power series are essentially just infinite polynomials. And so if you had a polynomial times a polynomial, like if you took 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, and you wanted to multiply it by x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, if you did something like that, you would just foil this thing out. That's what you would do. You'd use the distributed property and look at all the possible products. You distribute the 1, distribute the x, distribute the x squared. You look at all those possible combinations. The fact that the sequence is now infinite doesn't actually change how that works. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the first power series and write it on top. So this is the power series for e to the x you're going to see on top. And then I'm going to take the Maclaurin series for sine and write it down below. And so we're going to take sine of x right here. Now, for convenience, I did put a space right here, right? Because I want like terms to be in common columns. So we have an x column. Um, I'm going to skip the square column because sine doesn't have one. Then we get an x cubed column. And you make this thing go as far as you want. You can go on and on and on and on and on and on, right? And so now look at all the possible products. You're going to have x times 1, which is an x recorded here. You're going to get x times x, which is an x squared. You put in the x squared column. You're going to get x times 1 half x squared. That's going to give you a 1 half x cubed. You're going to write it in the x cubed column. You get x times 1 sixth x cubed. That'll give you 1 sixth x to the fourth. We're going to put in the x to the fourth column. And then keep on going as many times as you need to. Then take the next term. We have this negative 1 sixth x cubed. You're going to times that by 1, and you're going to end up with a negative 1 sixth x cubed. Okay. Then you're going to take negative 1 6 x cubed times it by x. That'll give you a negative 1 6 x to the fourth, which we get right here. Record the product there and keep on going. You're going to get a 1 half x squared times negative 1 6 x cubed. That would give you an x to the fifth term. You put in that column. Uh, then you're going to take x cubed times x cubed. Multiply those together. 
you're going to get negative 1 over 36 x to the 6. You put that in that column and keep on going. You'll notice I kind of did dot, dot, dots because how many columns do you need? Well, that kind of depends on what we're going for. Uh, we'll come back to that question in a moment. You do all those possible distribu distributions. Just do one monomial at a time and go through every possibility from the first one. Okay? So you're going to get two rows. Well, it depends on how many turns you did. You're going to get a first, you're going to get row one row for the first one. You're going to get another row for the next one. And then depending on how many times you go down, you might get another row. But the thing is, if you aligned everything in columns, we then can combine like terms very quickly. X plus nothing is an X. X squared plus nothing is an X squared. Um, you get one half X cubed minus one sixth X cubed. In this case, we do have to find some common denominators, but the difference will be one third x cubed. So then we get a 1 6 x to the 4th minus 1 6 x to the 4th. Those will cancel. If we did the x to the 5th terms, we would combine like terms there. If we did x to the 6th, uh, we would combine some like terms right there. The, the key thing to make sure though is that you have to make sure you do enough rows so that everyone involved um, gets included there. Because it's like, how do you produce an x to the 5th? An x to the 5th came up would come about by taking x times an x to the 4th. Um, an x to the fifth would come by by doing an x cubed with an x. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do x to the fifth, x cubed with an x squared. You would also get an x to the fifth by taking an x fifth right here and times it by one. And those are the only possibilities. So if you want to get up to the x to the fifth, you might have to do an extra row. So you have to kind of do some extra rows right here. You get this kind of like this matrix of all this information. And so when you combine all these things together, this last row will be our power series representation for each case you get an x you get an x squared you get a one-third x cubed um, the next term well the x to the fourth canceled out right so you, you just have zero of those the next one would be an x to the fifth which we don't know what the coefficient is we didn't do enough information but we could find more information and do it if it was necessary we could recursively find the coefficient of x to the fifth and we could recursively find the coefficient of x to the seventh or x to the sixth or however many terms we need to do so generally speaking, we don't have a formula for the product of these two Maclaurin series, um, at least not a general formula. We do get a recursive formula, and that's typically sufficient because honestly, like we saw in the, in the previous video when we were trying to estimate an integral using a, a Maclaurin series, typically we don't use the whole series. We actually use a Taylor polynomial, which is just a partial sum of the series. And so in fact, Whatever it is, we need the Maclaurin series for e to the x times sine of x4. We actually might be good away with just the degree 3 Taylor polynomial that we see on the screen right now. So this recursive approach is actually sufficient for our purposes. Sometimes we have to do division as well. Like what if we want the Maclaurin series for tangent of x? Uh, tangent of x is the quotient of sine and cosine for which we know the Maclaurin series for sine and cosine. We just saw the one for sine. We've seen cosine previously, but here's a reminder in case we forgot it. Um, from eight minutes ago. Anyways, if you were trying to do long division with polynomials, you're going to take the numerator. It's going to be our dividend right here. Uh, then the denominator is going to be our divisor. So here's cosines Maclaurin series. Here's sines Maclaurin series. And you do all the possible quotients. How many ways does x divide into one? So you look at the, the term here, the first term here, the first term here. x divided by one is x. You're going to record that number on the top like you see right there. The next thing to do is you're gonna take the entire divisor and times it by x, in which case one times x is an x, right? Uh, one half x squared is gonna give us a negative one half x cubed. Um, x times positive 1 24th x to the fourth um, is gonna be 1 24th x to the fifth, like so. And you keep on going as far as you need to go because they might tell you find the, find the degree three Taylor polynomial, or in this case, the degree five. Um, and so then once you've done, once you multiply the divisor by uh, your quotient right there, x, you then subtract these things from above, right? Uh, x minus x is zero, so you get nothing there. Negative one sixth x cubed plus one half x cubed is gonna give you a one third x cubed. Um, one over 120 x to the fifth minus 124th x to the fifth. The fractions can be a little bit tedious, but you're gonna get 1 30th x to the fifth. And then keep on going as many terms as you need. Right? Then you repeat this process. Look at the first term, one third x cubed. And so you take one third x cubed and you divide it by one. Well, in this case, it's, it's not super exciting. It's gonna be one third x cubed again, right? That's the number you're gonna record up here. And so then what we're gonna do, erase all this, 
we're going to take this number and distribute it onto each term in the divisor. Go as far as you need. And we're going to record those things down here. And so assuming we got this number correctly, these two numbers should be identical. So when you subtract them, you know, they're, they're identical, just like Fred and George Weasley. Uh, one third X cubed minus one third X cubed, they're going to cancel and then do the, the subsequent division right there. Negative one thirtieth X to the fifth uh, plus one sixth X to the fifth. Uh, that's going to give you two fifteenths X to the fifth. And then keep on going and going and going as far as you need. Uh, the next question is then how many times does one divide into two two fifteenths X to the fifth? That then brings it up here and you can keep on going. And so then we've now figured out the first three terms of the Maclaurin series for tangent. You get X plus one third X cubed plus two fifteenths X to the fifth. And you can keep on going on and on and on and on and on. This gives us a recursive way of finding the Maclaurin series for division and, and, and multiplication. And with a little bit more sophisticated mathematics, we can remove this recursion and actually get a general formula. It turns out these tangent numbers are actually kind of a fun sequence. Uh, like, you know, one, one third, two fifteenths, what's the next number? There's actually a nice formula that predicts what it's going to be, but developing that formula goes beyond the scope of our class. A recursive uh, definite, a recursive formula will be sufficient for us. And so we can find these Taylor series and these Taylor polynomials more specifically by recursion for division and, and quotients. And sometimes we're going to need to be able to do these things. And so that brings us to the end of lecture 47, uh, where we've been talking about Maclaurin series and Taylor series. Um, as I keep on hinting to, uh, in, our, in our next lecture, 48, we're going to talk about Taylor polynomials and focus more on how Taylor polynomials can be used to approximate uh, problems, uh, you know, like integration like we've seen before. So we'll learn more about the Taylor polynomials next time, but we've already seen how useful they are. The Taylor polynomials approximate the Taylor series. And like in situations like this, we don't know the whole Taylor series, but we do know the Taylor polynomial up to degree five. And so we might actually just use that to approximate sign our tangent here. Tangent is approximately this polynomial right here. And so next time we'll talk some more about that. And do let me know if you have any questions in the meanwhile. If you if you want to, I mean, feel free to post your comment or your questions in, your com in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them for you. Um, it, it really is kind of fun. And I hope to hear from you all next time. See ya.